Hello, my name is Hannah and I'm a teacher at Twinkle. Thanks for joining me for daily reading. This is the first of 10 videos where we're going to be looking at a story called Jazz Harper Space Explorer. Each day we'll read a chapter of the story and we'll be working on some reading skills. I'm going to be asking you some questions as we go along, so if you'd like to write your answers down, you'll need a piece of paper or you could download the activity sheet using the link in the description below. You can type onto that activity sheet or you could print it out. Today, we're going to talk about how the book is built compared with other stories that you've read. Here's the front cover for the story. The first thing I'd like you to do is pause the video and have a think or discuss with someone what the front cover tells you about the book. What kind of story do you think this is going to be? Pause the video now. Okay, let's turn over. Here's the contents page. What does it look like? Does it look similar to any books you've read before? Do you notice anything different about this contents page from normal contents pages? I'd like you to have a look right at the bottom. This document is property of ISCEA International Space Colonization and Exploration Agency. That's unusual. I wonder if this book is going to be set out a little bit differently from books we've read in the past. Let's find out. Mars Year 84. Nearly 20 Mars years ago, the extraordinary story of two children who discovered life on Mars heralded the beginning of a new era for the Marineris colony and all humans living and working on the Red Planet. Now, after many years, researchers have uncovered documents from the Marineris archives which shed new light on the discovery and the events that led to it. Those documents are published here together for the first time. What follows is a story like no other. Okay, let's pause there and have a think. It looks like this book is going to be a collection of documents. Those documents are published here together for the first time. What do you think the word document means? Pause the video and write down any ideas you have about what the word document means. Well done. A document is a piece of text that holds important information. It could be a letter, a report, a newspaper article, an email, a form, a record, a list. Let's find out what these will be. Chapter 1. Ready for liftoff. Before we start reading, I'd like you to look at the first couple of lines on this page. 28th of May, 2060. Dear Brand New Diary of Adventure. What year is it in the story? The text is dated 2060. How many years in the future is that? If you'd like to, you could stop and work it out. Look at line two. Dear Brand New Diary of Adventure. What type of text are we looking at here? Well done. It's a diary. Whose diary do you think this might be? Think about the title of the story. Let's get reading. 28th of May 2060. Dear Brand New Diary of Adventure. Today was our very last visit to Grand before our epic mission to Mars. Mum and I travelled there on the air tram, like usual. Did you know that air trams travel really, really fast? I looked it up on the map app on my web spectacles as we sped over the tall tower blocks and green parks. At one point, we got up to 147 miles per hour. I asked Mum if that's how fast we'll be travelling through space. She said that the rocket will be much faster, over 20,000 miles per hour. 20,000! That's mega fast! That's stomach-churning, brain-melting fast! 
Sometimes, when we're on the air tram, I play games to make the journey more fun. Today, I imagine that I was a space pilot, speeding through the galaxy. Outside the windows, stars and planets zoomed past, blurring into streaks of light. An alien spaceship approached with lasers beaming, but I was ready to zap it into another dimension as soon as it got into range. Pow! 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 Oh, Jazz, you're not shooting aliens again, said Mum, as the other people on the tram stared. We like aliens. I explained that they had us cornered in the outer spiral arm of a distant galaxy and that I had no choice. Mum said that I should at least try to bring one back alive so that she could study it. That's what Mum does for a living. She's an extraterrestrial life researcher, an alien scientist. I performed a light-speed U-turn to capture an alien fleeing the shattered spaceship in a life raft. Hmm, Mum said, pretending to investigate my captured alien. It has bug eyes, seven legs, a spiky exoskeleton and liquid brains. This is like nothing I've ever seen before, Jazz. We could win the Galactic Discovery Prize for this. Do you think that's what alien life on Mars will look like? I asked. Mum laughed. I doubt they'll have seven legs. In fact, I doubt that they'll have any legs at all. I spent the rest of the journey thinking about Martians with tentacles and suckers, and some that crawled over the ground like slugs. When the air tram finally got to Sunset Heights, we released our seven-legged alien back into the wild and hopped onto the platform. Gran lives in one of those old-fashioned retirement villages from the 2020s, all glass and steel and curving walls. When she isn't racing her friends around the courtyard on a hover scooter or throwing street parties on weeknights, she's in her top floor flat, gazing through her binoculars at the happenings down below, or inviting people over for curry so hot it blows your head off. I could smell Gran's curry as soon as we got upstairs. Even before the front door opened, my eyes watered. My brave girls, said Gran, throwing open the door. That's how she always greets us, even though we've never done anything as brave as she has. Well, until now. Gran was wearing pink fluffy slippers, khaki trousers and a dressing gown covered in parrots. Off on an adventure to a new world! What I wouldn't give to be coming with you! Gran said that she had made us a proper meal to send us off. There'll be lean pickings in space, she said. No cheese, no meat, no chocolate, fudge cake. Mum pointed out that the technicians on Mars make good lab-grown beef, and I said that we'll eat insects because that's what they're farming out there. I've eaten plenty of insects in my time, said Gran. They were delicious when deep-fried in sweet and sour sauce. I'll send you my recipe, shall I? Did I ever tell you about the time when I ate toasted rhinoceros beetles in the Amazon rainforest? Gran always tells us stories of her youth, when she adventured to the most extreme corners of Earth. Every wall in her flat is crowded with photos. Gran as a young woman wearing a fur-hooded coat and pulling a sled across the Arctic snow. Gran relaxing in a hammock in the Amazon rainforest. Gran looking very tanned, riding a camel across the Sahara. Gran swimming with wild dolphins. I can't wait to have my own adventure, trekking across the Martian mountains, exploring caves and making campfires under the stars. Let's pause there for a second. What have you noticed about the way that the text looks on the page? Does it look like it's been typed on a computer? Look carefully. The paper is lined. Is that normal for a book? The text looks quite messy. Is that normal for a storybook? Why do you think the book has been presented in this way? Pause the video now to write down your ideas. Well done. Let's keep reading. After curry, Gran gave us slices of chocolate fudge cake so gooey that it glued our teeth together. Then it was time to say goodbye. Gran hugged us in the hallway. Right often, my ducks. I pulled away and looked up at Gran's smiling face. I wanted to take one last good look at her, her crinkling eyes and giant smile. I could feel the corners of my mouth trembling. Wiping tears from her eyes, Mum said, We don't have to write. She was trying to be brave. I could tell because her voice was wobbling when she spoke. We can just send you videos. This made me feel a little better. After all, I wouldn't see Gran again in real life for years. Gran wasn't having any of it, though. She wagged her finger, pulling that wise woman face that she's so good at. You never know. Who can say what will happen when you're millions of miles across the universe? 
Once, my satellite map went berserk in the middle of the Himalayas and it took weeks for us to trek to safety. Technology doesn't always behave as it should when you're in the throes of an adventure. Oh, that reminds me. I've got a present for you, Jazz. After fumbling around in her bag, Gran pulled out an object. At first I thought it was a battered old tablet. It was black and rectangular. But then Gran opened it up. It was a real-life, old-fashioned notebook with genuine paper inside. Tucked into the spine was a proper space pen with real ink and absolutely no need for a battery. I was gobsmacked. A vintage diary and pen, I gasped. Gran said that the pen is designed specially for use in space and that there was no need to charge the book or back it up online. She said that I should write down everything that happens as a record for posterity. When I got home, I looked up posterity. It means that what I write will go down in history as a record for future generations. Hello, future generations. It's me, Jazz. I hope that you're enjoying my diary of adventure. As you can probably guess, the diary that my gran gave me is the very diary that I'm writing in right this second. The last thing that Gran said before we left was, Safe voyage, brave adventurers, and don't forget to pack a spare pair of warm socks. I told Gran that I would miss her lots, and I gave her one last extra squeezy hug. I know my duck, she said. But that's what adventurers have to do. They have to leave people behind as they go off to discover new places and bring new knowledge to the world. That's the sort of thing that Gran is always saying, but it has never meant anything before now. I'm finally off on a real adventure, to a place far away where everything is going to be completely different from what I know. Mum is yelling and wanting to know whether I'm packed yet, so I'd better stop writing. We have a long journey ahead of us tomorrow to the Guiana Space Centre. We'll have to get up very early to make it in time for check-in. I have two silvery suitcases to fill up. Most of my luggage is clothes, clothes and more clothes. You can't do laundry on a spacecraft, so we have to have enough outfits for the four-month-long journey. Not only that, but we're going away for five years. Five years! I might be inches and inches taller by the time we come back, so lots of the clothes that I'm packing are way too big for me. Oh, and I mustn't forget warm socks. That's the end of Jazz's first diary entry. Pause the video and write down as many things as you can think of that show you that this is a diary entry. How is it different from most stories that you've read? Well done. Chapter one has three more pages. One, two, three. Before watching the next video, read these pages and try and write down what kind of document they are. There are more questions and activities that you can do after watching this video. Just click the link in the description below to download the activity pack. In the next video, we'll read Jazz's diary from chapter two and we'll talk about the difference between fact and opinions. See you then.